Hi guys, this is Leah, and I'm going to be walking you through my thematic collection, which is Greek mythology for 6th grade. First, I'm going to start off with English language arts. I've created four different activities. Each one is based on a Greek character mythology or a story or ancient Greece. They're all connected to an Oklahoma academic standard, and they're going to focus on either writing or reading. For activity one, I have the Greek theater where kids are going to, um, they're going to choose a Greek god or goddess and they're going to find a story that contains that Greek god or goddess. They're going to create their own play and they can make it through modern time, western, 80s, whatever. If they want to do traditional, they can adapt it to any way they want it, but they have to keep major plots in with it. The second activity is the Iliad journey, which is the class together as a whole where the teacher will read it out loud or the students will read it individually. They're going to keep a journal throughout the book and they're going to talk about their favorite parts in it. They're going to write down favorite quotes, their opinions, and then as the book goes on in class, the teacher should stop the class and have discussions with them so they can reflect and understand what's going on in the chapters, what do they think is going to happen, and that they can continue reading. They'll keep the journal, but the teacher shouldn't grade over like proper grammar or sentence structure. It's about the students reading and be able to communicate what they're thinking about the book. The third activity is the retelling of the myths. This is when a student is going to make a timeline of a certain Greek story. For this activity, I would prefer the kids to use favorite Greek myths, which is retold by Mary Pope Osborne, who does the Magic Trias books. But they're going to take a story from there and make a timeline from a sequence of events of what happened in that story. They shouldn't have to put too many details into it, just major plots that happen. And then they're going to present it to the class. Each student will have a different story, and so this will give a brief outline of each story to other students and if they find a story that really captures their attention they can go back and read it. Um, activity four is called mythological mindset and it would be done I feel like at the end of the unit after they've been exposed to a bunch of Greek myths, um, stories and everything they're going to create their own myth. They're going to have to create new characters, plots, settings, viewpoints, conflicts and dialogues and it would be great to have the story at a minimum of one page and then a maximum of four pages because you don't want to be reading ten-page stories, even though they could be great. Next, I'm going to go on over to math. Again, I have four activities. They're going to be covering... Activity one is called Zeus Bolts, and it's going to be focused on translations, rotations, reflections over the X and Y axis. The second book, sorry, the second activity is Athena's Parthenon, and that's going to be focusing on area, area of triangles, trapezoids, rectangles. The students are going to have to help finish building the Parthenon and find out where the statue of Athena is going to go inside. Should it go in the corner, in the center? And then the third activity is Poseidon's Pool Party, and this is going to focus on units of measurement like volume, specifically conversions like cups, ounces, quarts, gallons, and they're trying to figure out if Poseidon has enough drinks for his 45 guests to have three cups each of all these beverages. So, And then the next one is Hermes Head, where it's just an introduction to symmetry. So this wouldn't be, it's not hard, so you wouldn't want this to be an assignment, but this is like to get them hooked. And there's a drawing attached for the students to use and they can, the teachers should ask them like, how many lines do you think just looking at it right off the back? And this will help the teacher decide if the students are ready, do they know enough about symmetry to where she can jump in and act like they already know or if she needs to go back and explain why there's only one or two lines. Next, I'm gonna go over to the social studies tab. For social studies, I have four activities. For the record, they're all going to have four activities. The first activity is Greek maps. And so this is, they're going to be using geographical, 
excuse me, geography skills. And you could do this at the end, I feel like, of a unit or during, but they're going to pick out, they're going to read about an ancient Greece and then a god or goddess that is attached to a certain city that they're assigned to. They can work in groups, small groups, and they're going to pick a city that has a special god or goddess, and they're going to represent that city on a map, and then they're going to draw the god or goddess right beside it, and they should probably make a timeline, and that's about it. It's mainly just understanding, like, how to use a map, basically. Activity two is Greek plays. Um, I obviously really enjoy the plays and the acting out of things. It's a fun part of school. So this is when there's going to be four groups in each class, and you're going to assign them each an ancient Grecian city. The students will then create a skit play presentation of some sort um, that represents the people, places, environments of that Grecian city. They can use props. Um, to display the clothing or food or merchandise, whatever they want to do. They just need to um, understand the, the geographical, physical features and how people lived around it. Activity three is ancient Greek mapping, which is... I created it just to be an introduction to different map projections because maps have changed all over time. So I said for this activity, the teacher should show them the map of ancient Greece and then a map of modern day Greece. And then they need to ask the differences and the similarities between them. For the fourth activity, I, it's called issues and events. And this is about how geographic factors have an effect on current events and issues. Um, I tied it into where students will be comparing the similarities and differences of ancient Greece's events and issues to the U.S.'s today current events and issues. Um, since like the class is set on continually talking about Greek mythology, this would they would already have that background knowledge but you would need to allow time for them to research current events of today and then for them to create the venn diagram next i'm going to go on to the science tab and activity one is persephone's garden the science ones are a little more difficult but this one would focus more on photosynthesis plants so they're going to read the greek myth of Persephone and Demeter, a very quick rendition of it, and discuss how the ancient Greeks used this myth to explain how plants live and die and why they do on certain times of the season. But for this, the students are going to act like they are writing for the scientific journal and they have to write, they have to explain what photosynthesis is in this portion of the photos of the um, journal article. They, this could be used ongoing throughout with a bunch of different projects, but for this one part in the booklet, they're going to be focusing just on photosynthesis and how it keeps plants alive. And they would create like an illustration of it too. Activity two is the Aegean Sea ecosystems, where the students need to focus. They're learning about ecosystems, so they'll focus on the ecosystems the Aegean Sea, but each group will pick something different from plants, mammals of the sea, fish of the sea, or they can focus on one specific plant, mammal, or fish. And by the end of it, they'll have like a trifold and you can have the Aegean Sea Ecosystem Museum to explore and no one should have the same thing because it's all going to be different. Activity three is ancient Greece. Um, this would be used more to like hook their interest or be an introduction to the lesson or unit. And you're just basically going to use a KWL chart to know, figure out what the children um, know about like, how the ancient Grecians may have um, ruined the land or changed the land to help 
I mean, their way of life, and then they're going to write about what they want to know. Like, how was the ecosystem disturbed in ancient Greece? And then you wouldn't finish the, what you learned until, obviously, the end of the unit. Um, but this is so children can understand, or students, excuse me, they'll be able to understand how people have an effect on the ecosystem, and we're part of it. The fourth activity is Poseidon's power, and that is just Earth systems. So I'm mainly going to, it was about the water cycle. So you just do a fun introduction about Poseidon and how he's the god of the sea. And then you're going to ring that into the water cycle. And the students will, this will be towards the end of a unit. And the students will be playing water cycle Jeopardy. And they'll have specific categories in them. And this will be done the day before the test. So they can study, figure out what they need to work on. And then at the end is just a bibliography of about 25 books. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, this was really fun. Thank you.